Hello there. In the previous set of videos, we've mainly been focusing on normally distributed random variables. For example, if x is a normally distributed random variable coming from some population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then we typically sometimes write x is distributed according to the distribution n, which is usually used as an abbreviation for the normal distribution, with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Some notations will use the variance sigma squared instead of the sigma in this notation. Also, as we have discussed in previous videos, we can define what we call the z-score, where the z-score is given by this relation here. So what we do is we take all our values, subtract the mean of that distribution, and then divide that difference by the standard deviation of the population, and that gives us what we call a z-score. And that connects two, di di two different distributions, the normal distribution and the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution has a couple special properties, two of them being the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Hence, we will write that the z-score values are normally distributed with mean, mean zero and standard deviation one. In this video, we're gonna talk about a particular piece of information that we discussed a few videos back, namely the distribution for sample means. All right, so let's start with a couple of assumptions here. So suppose that you draw um, independent and identically distributed samples from a population P where that population has mean mu and standard deviation sigma. And consider the random variable x bar. So x bar is the random variable that represents the sample mean of any of the independent random samples. Then, if the central limit theorem holds, that is if n is sufficiently large and a couple other things then the random variable x bar is distributed according to a normal distribution where the mean of that distribution is mu and the standard deviation is given by sigma divided by the square root of the sample size n So if this is the case, what kind of consequences do we get? So if the z-score for x is equal to x minus mu x divided by sigma x, then that means that the z-score for x bar is going to be x bar minus mu x bar divided by sigma x bar. So if this is true, well, according to the central limit theorem, the mu x bar is going to be equal to mu. And sigma x bar is equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. And this is usually the notation for the z-score for a particular sample mean. Or you can rewrite this equation as zx bar is equal to the square root of n times x bar minus mu divided by sigma. So let's work through a couple examples of how you would use this. So example one, suppose you draw a random sample of size 52 from a population P where the mean is equal to 52 and the standard deviation is equal to 3. What is the likelihood that the mean of the sample and I'm going to call that sample S, is less than 
53.1. So let's begin writing this actual problem that we're trying to solve here. So we're trying to find out that the probability of the sample mean is less than 53.1. So what do we know here? Well, this population has some distribution, but we don't necessarily know that it's normal. But we have that the sample size m is 52, which is sufficiently large. So we may assume that the central limit theorem can hold in this scenario. And let us assume it does. So we're going to find the z-score for this value, 53.1. So the z-score for x bar is going to be equal to the square root of n times x bar minus mu divided by sigma. So in this case, this is going to be equal to the square root of the sample size, which is 52, times the sample mean of interest, 53.1, minus the mean of the population, which is 52, divided by the standard deviation of 3. So this is going to be z of 53.1, which is going to be approximately equal to 2.6441. So this is the z-score for 53.1. So that means this problem is equivalent to asking, what is the probability that the z-score for x-bar is going to be less than 2.6441? One. And remember, z-scores follow a distribution according to the standard normal distribution. So of course, we have our distribution here. And this is going to be our x-bar axis. And it is normally distributed around mu. And we're going to find out, OK, what is the probability that this distribution is less than 2.611? So 2.6441. So what is the area here? So of course this area is equal to the integral from minus infinity to 2.6441 under the standard normal distribution nz dz. So we're going to go to Desmos and try and figure what this integral is. So what is that going to be? So that's going to be the integral from minus infinity, so we'll call it minus 1000, up to our z-score value, 2.6441 under the standard normal distribution, n of z dz. And we get this is equal to 0.9959. All right, so let's look at a, another example. So example two. So suppose that the volume of water of water bottles is approximately 0.9959 normal with a mean volume of 16.9 ounces and a standard deviation of 0 0.3 ounces. So if you randomly select a sample of 72 water bottles What is the likelihood that the sample mean is within 0 0.01 ounces of the mean? So let us draw a picture here to sort of see what we're talking about. So our mean is stated to be 16.9 ounces. So we want to find the likelihood that our sample mean is in between these values. And keep in mind this is our x value. 
So we want to know, okay, what is 0 0.01 from the mean? So 0 0.01 up here is going to be 16.91. And in the left side, this is going to be 16.89. Since this is 90, that's 91, that's going to be 89. So this is going to be the associated area. But notice this is not the area that we want because this is for the x-axis, not the x-bar axis. This is just here to sort of help us uh, figure out what we want. All right, so let's set our problem up a little bit. So we want the probability that x-bar is in between 16.89 and 16.91. So we want to shift this into the standard normal distribution. So the standard normal distribution is not going to have the same exact shape, but it's going to have a similar distribution shape except with a different standard deviation, namely sigma divided by the square root of n. So this is going to be our x-bar axis. This is going to be centered around 0. And there's going to be associated z-score values that we're going to find the area in between. And what will they be? So the z-score for 16.91 is going to be equal to the square root of the sample size. And our sample size is going to be 72 times 16.91 minus 16.90 divided by the standard deviation of, let's see, 0 0.3. And that's going to come out to approximately equal to 0 0.2828. And for the other value, z-score for 16.89, this is similarly going to be 72 times 16.89 minus 16.90 divided by 0 0.3. And you should be able to notice here that these two values are related because they're symmetric around the mean. Therefore, they should be just opposites of one another since the normal distribution is symmetric also. All right, so therefore, this is going to be equal to 0 0.2828, and this is negative 0 0.2828. So our pretty much answer is, you know, what is this area equal to? So that means the answer is the probability that z is in between these two values. So, of course, we can find out this value by taking the integral from negative 2828 to positive 2828 of the standard normal distribution. So, let's find that out. So, that's going to be equal to, let's see, negative 0 0.2828 up to 0 0.2828. So that's 0.2227 approximately, which is about 22.27%. So there's a 22.27% chance that the sample mean is going to be between uh, 0 0.01 ounces of the mean. And that's pretty much how we solve uh, problems associated with the sample mean of a distribution.